internet friends welcome back this is Sierra and as you guys can see from my background you guys know that that means I'm finally back at home in my Japanese apartment just doing life in Japan again um, if this is your first time here you might be a little bit confused um, my name is Sierra and I'm an American who lives in Japan with my family every week we try to make a video about our life here and how we live a little bit more sustainably another thing you might not know or if you've been here in a while is that our family recently just got back to Japan from the United States because we had to go there because even though with all of everything going around in the world right now, we didn't really have much of a choice. We had to go to the States to file some citizenship paperwork. Um, if you guys don't know, our son is adopted. I put uh, an adoption playlist up in the cards if you guys want to check it out. Any questions that you guys have about that, uh, you can go ahead and drop them in the comment section and maybe I'll add them to our next Q&A. Anyways, uh, we had to sort out his American citizenship paperwork and we had to do some medical stuff and since we were in the States anyway, we decided to spend a little bit of time with both sides of our family and see some friends over there as well because it was literally been two years since we've been home. Anyway, I think that's enough of the introduction. Let's get into what I actually wanted to talk about today, which as you guys can tell by the title of the video, that's what we're going to talk about today. I'm a little bit worried about saying that word on YouTube these days because a lot of people are getting demonetized and are getting their videos flagged as fake news. So I'm just going to avoid saying that word. But yeah, use your imagination. Anyway, um, when we got back to Japan from the United States, one thing they're doing at the border right now is they are giving a test to everyone who comes through into Japan. It doesn't matter how old you are. It doesn't matter where you're traveling from in the world. The only way I think you can get around it is you have to be coming to like maybe three countries and or coming from somewhere else in Japan. Um, otherwise, when you get to the border, they will test you because you can't get into Japan otherwise. Um, originally, they were doing the nose test in all the Japanese airports, but when we were in the United States, they actually did switch to, to the saliva test. That being said, um, I'll tell you guys about the airport test first, and then unfortunately, because we live on a military base, we were forced to be tested again once we got back to the base and we were home for a certain amount of time, so we ended up having to do the nasal test, which, to be completely honest, is not that much fun but I'll tell you guys all about that in just a second so let's rewind a little bit to what happened at the airport actually I just realized I don't have the papers in front of me they're over there so I'm gonna go and get them because being prepared yeah so I got all this stuff now and yeah now we're gonna talk about it. so um one more disclaimer I want to throw out there that this may not be the same exact experience for everyone, but this is just what happened to me, so I can only speak from my personal experience. Also, we did fly in through Tokyo Haneda Airport. If you fly in through Osaka or if you fly in through Narita, then you might have a different experience. But anyways, just throwing that out there so that y'all don't come for me in the comment section. So, okay, so here's what happened to us on our way into Japan. So first thing that happened actually happened on our flight when we were leaving Detroit and they gave us a piece of paper that looks like this. Uh, it's not really that interesting but on the side it kind of it explains the procedure is going to be when you land. But um, what happens once you get off the plane is you have to have all your documents filled out already and you go through something called a document check where basically they look at the form that you were supposed to fill out on the plane and make sure there's no mistakes. And then they take you in to like a little holding area where you basically wait to go to the next room and they give you a piece of paper that looks like this. I'll hold it up on the screen if you guys want to see it. Um, and also give instructions about everything that's going to happen to you during the testing process. And then you go to the second room and what they do there is you do the actual spit test, which is kind of gross to be completely honest. What happens is first you go through again and they check to make sure that your passport matches your papers so that nothing is wrong and then they give you a little test tube type thing. Um, the only thing I can compare it to is if you've ever done something like the 23andMe DNA test, that's pretty much exactly what the spit tube they give you looks like and it has a little funnel and you take the tube, put it in the funnel and you have to spit like this much into it and that's it. It's actually a pretty simple, quick, painless um, if you have kids, it can be a little bit difficult if they don't want to spit. <laughs> Luckily, my son is a boy, and well, not because he's a boy, but young children are kind of gross, and they love to spit. So he thought that he was just doing like some kind of like fun spitting competition with us, which was pretty funny, but they just filled it up with spit, and then they test it, and then you're pretty much good to go. And then after that, they take you back into more document examination. I guess they just want to make sure that you still have the same document. And then depending on your situation, you may or may not have to wait for a couple of hours. They didn't make our family wait for some reason. They just let our family through. I think it's because you live on a base. But when you're all done with your testing, 
they should give you a result at the airport, but we didn't get one because um, my husband works for the military base, so we just got a little like pink pass-through paper like this, and they just let us go. So we went to customs and we collected all our luggage and we got on the shuttle back to our base and we stayed home for 14 days. Actually, we stayed a lot longer home, but that's beside the point. Anyway, and then we had to retest later to get out of quarantine. But yeah, that's pretty much how the spit test goes. It's not a big deal, it's pretty easy. Um, I do know that if you have a little tiny child, it might be difficult to get them to do the spit test. So I do think that they're still offering the nasal swab at the airport. If for some reason you can't spit or you have a little child who can't spit, but there's no way around testing at the airport. So either you test or you don't get into the airport. So, okay, now let's move on to the second type of testing that I have done that I did actually today, which if you guys can tell my voice sounds kind of weird. My throat is a little bit irritated from it. I'll talk to you guys about that in a second. But anyways, the nasal swab testing, I'm going to be completely honest and frank with y'all. It's not a fun time. It's not. And anyone who tells you differently either is lying or didn't actually have the test. So yeah, I obviously wasn't able to get an actual test to show you guys, obviously, because I'm just like, you know, a regular person, but I'm going to show you guys kind of what happens during the test. And I'm going to tell you about our experience. Again, this information might vary by location and this just might be what our base has to offer. So please don't take everything I'm saying as gospel. Take everything I'm saying with a grain of salt. I'll kind of do a little demonstration of what kind of happens in a second. But um, little man, Mr. and I all got tested and little man's test is a little bit different than ours. So I guess I'll tell you about our test first and then his test. Okay, so uh, with adults, at least where we are, we got the classic nasal swab test. What happens is they take a massive Q-tip like this. Actually, this is just a regular size Q-tip. I'm gonna make a Q-tip. Um, they take a Q-tip that's about two times the size of a regular Q-tip and they shove it up your nose, twist it around and pull it back out. I know that sounds graphic. I'll show you guys kind of what happens. But first, I think we need to make a long Q-tip with some tape. All right, so this is what the actual swab they use on you looks like. No, it doesn't kind of what it looks like. The only difference is it's not made of two Q-tips taped together and there's only a swab in one end and the other end is just like chopped off. So because I wanted to make it real authentic, I could have used some scissors. Oh yeah, the other difference between this one is this one is not flexible and the one that they use on your COVID test is really flexible. So don't have to worry about it like, yeah, going in and jamming in there. Anyway, okay, um, for some reason, it's like wrong to like do fake tests on people. So I have my lovely assistant, Disney University Bear, to help me. Uh, let's pretend that Bear is a human and he's having a test. So what happens basically is they, at least in my experience, they just told me to sit down and relax and look straight forward. And if I wanted to, I could close my eyes and breathe normally. So that's what I did. I closed my eyes. Yes, I was terrified because I was having this shoved up my nose. Basically what happens is they just stick it in your nose and go to the back of your throat, hold it in there, twist it around and pull it back out. Um, I know in different places, sometimes they put it in twice on each side. In my experience, it only happened once. Let's do the dramatic reenactment. Okay, Bear, if you want, you can close your eyes. I just need to relax and breathe normally and don't jerk around too much, okay, Bear? He understands, okay. They take it, they put it into your nose, all the way to the back of your throat, hold it in there for a second, twist it, and they pull it back out, and then you're done. That's it. Um, I can't speak for kids and I can't speak for Mr. Uh, but Mr. told me that he didn't feel any pain and he didn't really feel it. It just that it felt really weird. Um, my personal experience, um, when it was going into my nose, it kind of felt like, I don't know what to describe it, but it felt exactly like somebody was shoving a Q-tip into my nose. And after that, it was fine and it was over. However, the one thing that I will say is that I didn't notice that we were still at the testing location, but on the way home and actually still now a little bit, as I said, my voice is sounding really weird. Um, at least it sounds weird to me. I've had a sore throat on the right side only, which is the side that they swabbed all day. And I think it's just that maybe they either went in too far and maybe twisted a little too violently. Or maybe I just have a really sensitive throat. I don't know. But my throat hasn't been quite the same since I got it done this morning. So if you're like a singer or something, that's something to keep in mind that you might not be able to work or sing for a couple of days. Okay, now let's talk about what happened with a little man. Um, with kids, I think it varies on the kid, but 
here where I got the testing done, they said that people who are under the age of 10, their test is done a little bit differently. And when they do the swab, it doesn't actually have to go all the way up into the nose. They just kind of swab it like on each side and you're done. Um, and again, I'm gonna take this apart. And for the sake of the internet, I'm just gonna do another dramatic reenactment. Uh, basically what they did with Little Man is they took the swab and they put it like really only like up to here inside of his nose at least that's what it looked like I couldn't see and the swab they used for him was a lot smaller than the swab they used for us um, but they just kind of put it up in his nose on one side twisted it around he freaked out because he didn't like it and then he did it the second time on the other side pulled it back out and then they were done so that's pretty much how it worked um, he did not enjoy his test obviously he got pretty upset because nobody would like a q-tip up their nose but Overall, the technician we worked with here, if you're watching, thank you so much. She was actually amazing. We were all nervous and she helped calm us down and she was really receptive to understanding that our son had some prior medical trauma. Actually, most adoptees have medical trauma, but I'm not gonna get into that, but she was really receptive. She lifted it really well and she even let little man like, help by holding like her hand in the Q-tip and just, you know, he felt like he was in control of the situation. And after a few seconds, it was over and we were done and we got to go home. So anyways, yeah, that's pretty much everything I have to say about our testing experience. Um, if you have any questions about it or if you guys want to ask me anything, once again, I'm not a medical professional. I'm just kind of making this video to share my opinion because I figure, you know, one more story about how testing goes. If they can help one person be a little bit less anxious, then great. If you guys have any more questions for me, you can go ahead and ask those questions in the comment section. And if you guys like this video, which obviously you did if you've watched all the way to the end, please make sure to hit the subscribe button and I will see you guys soon. Thank you guys so much for watching. Bye.